starting with my blank slate here, our mantle is not all that deep. And so when I want to add any kind of garland, this is the way I do it. I add a paper wrapped wire because I've got to have it almost hang off the front in order to have room to put any embellishments actually on the mantle. I think our mantle is only about eight inches deep. I have five wires there. And this is the garland that I started with as the base. I found the center, and wrapped that in very tightly. like to spread and fluff out the garland as I go. And first I did the right side because that's the direction that the garland goes. But when I got to the left side, the garland was facing the wrong way. And this particular garland was easy to fix. I just undid the individual pieces, flipped them around the other direction, and rewrapped. Easy enough to do. Garlands are directional and sometimes you can't undo them like this and you just have to bend them over. But this worked beautifully. So there I have the very first garland in place. And now comes layering. Layering, layering, and more layering. This little green garland, also directional, I cut it in half and I'm only kind of doing it on the edges it doesn't go all the way to the middle and you'll see why eventually because of what I'm placing there but I just kind of weave it in and out working it as I go bring up some branches intertwine it. Helps to hold it there too if you wrap it in and out. And there is the second garland added in. So my inspiration for this mantle was this beautiful hand painting on an old metal tin. I found it at a my favorite place, the potting shed by a local artist. So next up, I'm adding some little greenery bush picks that I actually used last year when I made my crazy fall mantle tree. If you haven't seen that video, it's interesting. These natural looking fern picks I just love because I, they look so real to me. I added a lot of them in my fall tree last year. Most everything I'm using came from that uh, project. There's 
There's all the ferns in. Now I'm adding in some pine. When we think of fall, we think of the smell of pines. And it gives a nice extra texture, I think, to the garland. Eucalyptus. Now we're getting somewhere. It's looking way more full. I had two of these pretty little things and I added them toward the center and the ends. I had five of these and they were perfect because I wanted to bring in those whiter, creamier colors like the color of the pumpkin. So I just tucked them in here and there. Sometimes I would use another twig to wrap around it to make sure it's in place. I've also added two pumpkins in the middle and now these things. Some beautiful maple leaves and some berries with some pine cones. And I just twisted the pine cone stick around the maple leaves and I'm adding them to the center and also to each end. So here is what we have so far. Adding in those maple leaves. Come to think of it, maybe they're oak leaves. I think they are. And more pumpkins. Last year in my tree project, I had a lot of these little willow branches. And so I decided to grab a few of those, kind of twist them together in a sort of a circle and place that in the middle as a backdrop for what I'm going to be adding in the very center to make a pop. I decided to take some of my dehydrated oranges and I wired them in and added a beautiful bow. Now for the accessories. My lantern with the dried floral wreath I made last year in a video. My little houses with the birch candles, some little pine trees, and this mercury glass pumpkin. And that pumpkin gave me an idea. You see at those two spools there, which were given to us by Randy's mother when she worked in a cotton mill, well, I wanted to add some shinier pumpkins. And I had these three pumpkins that I had bought cheaply at Hobby Lobby. The green one there on the left is wooden. So what I decided to do was coat them with epoxy. The stone coat countertop epoxy is just amazing stuff. No VOC, which is wonderful. No smell. So what I'm doing here, I, after I mixed it, I'm adding a little bit to three separate cups. In one cup I added just a tiny tiny drop of brown dye and in another cup some white dye. And in the third cup a very tiny bit of some pearl mica powder, which is going to give it a nice little glisten. You have to mix that pretty well to get all of that little mica powder thoroughly incorporated. 
So to start with, for my green wooden pumpkin, I poured a little clear epoxy on it and used my hands to really rub all of that in. You know, epoxy, especially with curves, it will want to have surface tension. So it was important that I get it completely and thoroughly coated. So putting the clear on first, that was going to allow the other colored epoxies that I add for them to flow down the sides. Now for the fun part. I'm drizzling some of the brown dyed epoxy over the top of the pumpkin. Now it's naturally going to flow. But I do help it along here and rub it in. With this pumpkin, all I really wanted was just a hint of some color to give it some depth. This little gourd was not the right color, so I first spray painted it white and let that dry. And here come the dyes. First the brown. And then I added some white. What do you guys think? Need to give it a name. I'm thinking Latte. You know, you could play with this stuff continuously, which I did. Look at those colors. I just love, 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 love how it turned out. And playing again. Now for the big pumpkin. I'm using the rest of my clear epoxy to again give it a coat so that the rest of the epoxy will slide. Now with this large pumpkin it's going to sit on uh, my hearth. I wanted to do something a little different. And this is called a dirty pour. So in that bucket that has a little bit of the residue, I'm adding some spray paint. I added some white. And now I'm pouring in a little bit of the brown dye. And what you want to do is layer between what you're pouring. So here I'm adding a kind of a creamy colored spray paint and then I'm adding my white dye. And you just continue layering like this, alternating between adding spray paints and adding epoxy until your cup is full. Here we go, ready for the dirty pour. Now 
This is so much fun to play with. Can't wait to redo my kitchen countertops. I have some more dye coming in in two days, so I'll be able to finally finish up sample making and get started on that kitchen. Now, as the epoxy was running, I came back and added a little bit more of the brown dye to the little gourd there. It seemed to be kind of losing and melding all the colors together, and I still wanted some distinction. And the longer you let that epoxy sit for a little bit, it thickens and tends to stay more in place. It will still run, but not as quickly. All done. Let me know what you think of my design this year for our mantle. Happy fall, y'all.